Tips for working with a collaborative pianist. This video comes to you in three parts. One, score preparation. Two, booking or inquiry. And three, collaboration and logistics. As always, links and more information are in the description. Let's start with some score preparation reminders. If you are using original scores, one, make sure the sheet music you are giving to the collaborative pianist matches the edition and publishing company you are using. Sometimes there's a new edition with revisions, sometimes the score is out of print. Here, the piano parts are the same, but one arrangement has the viola part and the other is for clarinet. If the scores don't match, at least compare the sheet music and write down any changes. Also check that the key you are singing in is the same key as the sheet music you are submitting. Although some pianists are trained to sight transpose, it's easier if we don't have to. Two, write in bar numbers and or rehearsal markings. Bar numbers at the beginning of each system are appreciated. If you have rehearsal markings, which are generally a letter inside of a square, writing that in is also great. It makes it easier and faster to find starting places during rehearsals. Three, discuss and write in cuts, tempo markings, repeats, whether or not you're taking repeats and or first, second endings, and any major changes. Cuts will depend on the type of performance. This could mean reducing the orchestral-only interludes in a concerto for the pianist, or even cutting out whole sections of the piece for all performers due to time constraints. When in doubt, ask your teacher or pianist for clarification, and they will likely help you make those cuts. Remember to write them in so you don't miss your cue. You'll probably need at least one original score for a jury competition, exam, etc. If you need a second copy, check with your local library, university, or college library. Some places you don't even have to be a student at that institution to borrow books. If the score is not available where you are located, you can check with the librarians to see if it's possible to do interlibrary loans. I'll leave links in the description with more information. If you are using photocopies, numbers 1, 2, and 3 still apply to this section. 4. Make sure it is legal to photocopy your scores and make sure that you are allowed to use those photocopies for the purposes of your exam, jury, or competition. Some publishing houses list allowances on their websites, but may also require you to submit a request for permission. Some competitions and exams only allow original scores for all performers, so it's better to read through the fine print beforehand. 5. Please provide clear and legible copies. That means don't cut off any notes or edges of pages. Keep in mind where a three-hole punch might be. Use a scanner app or an actual scanner. Sometimes adjusting the zoom to 99% or 97% will already help with oversized scores. Hold the page steady while scanning so that there are no fuzzy or blurry notes. Remove anything obstructing the view of the page. I think this is by far my favorite photocopy submission mishap. There is a sticky note on top of the score that wasn't removed before photocopying. All of the examples you've seen are submissions that I received and performed with under various circumstances. Is it ideal? No. Do we understand that life happens sometimes though? Absolutely. Is it still doable? Yes except for the ones missing the piano parts entirely. Six, submitting your scores. Each pianist will have their own way of preparing scores, so it's best to check with them on how they would like their sheet music. If you're allowed to keep a scan of your music, it makes it convenient to send the PDFs to use on devices or to print specific layouts. If you can't reach the pianist, or if you don't know who they will be and need to submit printed scores to a department for a deadline, a three-hole punch, tape, and a binder are your friends. I'll make a separate video on taping together music, check for a link in the description soon, but here are some ways that I've prepared my scores. The safest would be to print double-sided and hole punch in a way similar to the original edition. Here, I taped it together to lay flat. This only works with up to about five pages, and it depends on the music stand. 
It's still hole punched and in a binder because loose sheets of paper can fall off the music stand, especially if there's AC or fans running or if it's windy outside. This last one requires a bit more strategizing to sort out best page turns, but either single-sided, then tape as though double-sided and hole-punched, or printed as a combination of single and double-sided. If I have to be handed printed photocopies and don't know what the music will be, but have enough time for arts and crafts before rehearsal, I personally request a stack of single-sided pages, no staples, paperclip is fine. That way I can arrange the pages myself since most of the time I won't have a page turner with me. As a side note for those of you wondering, a page turner is someone who sits next to the pianist and turns their pages for them during performances. Talking about this would be an entirely different video, so we're gonna move on. Seven, extras. If you are singing in a different language, you can submit lyrics and translations. The pianist may have already done this research, but if it's a last minute gig, it's definitely nice to have. Sometimes your translations differ anyway, so it's good to compare notes. If you have a preferred recording or reference recording, this can also be useful. Once again, it depends on who you're working with. This might seem like a lot of steps, because it is, but the more you do it, the easier it gets and becomes part of the workflow. The care and time taken is appreciated and it can make things go a lot more smoothly so everyone can focus on playing the music. Part two. Booking or inquiry. When inquiring with a pianist, check with them well in advance to coordinate and schedule rehearsals and performances. Give them relevant information like the locations, times, dates, repertoire, type of performance, such as lessons, recordings, jury, competition, exam, etc. And so you can sort out if you need to book a rehearsal space or not. Check what their preferred form of communication is, whether it's by calling, email, text, etc. Some studios have their own lists of collaborative pianists that they work with, so check with your teacher or professor. For competitions, a list of pianists they normally work with might be provided. If your event has multiple rounds, do mention the potential second or third round dates to the pianist so you're not stuck searching for someone last minute if you advance to the next round. Part 3 collaboration, and logistics. Once you have booked your dates for rehearsals or performances, now it's time to work with the pianist. Here are some reminders. Show up on time to rehearsal, prepared, with a pencil, your sheet music, equipment, and the agreed upon payment. You are working towards the same goal to prepare for your event, so communicate any ideas and intentions with the pianist early on since everyone has a different approach to music making. If you are new at working with a pianist, you could consider having your teacher present for the first or first few rehearsals. You can also ask the pianist for permission to record rehearsals to send to your teacher or for your own personal review. If your event is a live performance, discuss the logistics. Where will you be standing or sitting in relation to the piano? Is there a music stand or equipment that has to be carried on or off stage? Will you be bowing before and or after playing together or opting for other forms of acknowledgement? It depends on the context of the pieces you're performing and kind of event. If there are any changes or things the pianist should know about the performance, the venue, etc., do mention this as soon as you find out. As always, communication is key throughout the entire process. Once your performance is done, a simple thank you goes a long way. You never know if you'll collaborate with them again in the future. It is super fun to learn music and play with new people, so I hope this video gives you some insight on how to work with a collaborative pianist. If you have further questions or fun stories to share, you can leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy collaborating!